Now, what I'm about to show you is going to change the way you invest in real estate forever. This AI agent will take away hours of mind-numbing calculations and endless scrolling through listings and listing sites. With just a simple prompt, this AI agent finds every property that matches the criteria, calculates investment returns so I know if it's a good deal or not, analyzes the entire market within that neighborhood, city, or zip code, and provides real historical home values so I can predict future appreciation and really know if this is actually a really good deal in a really good market or not. All these outputs will be based on real data with real historical significance. This isn't just an AI agent. It's your ultimate edge in real estate investing, giving you the clearest, most data-driven insights to dominate any market. So with that simple prompt, I got a summary of market conditions telling me if it's a buyer's or seller's market, how prices are trending, and where the market is headed and how it's shifted. It also gives me an actual score on what type of market it is. It tells me how I should be negotiating. It tells me the risk level of where I'm going to be buying properties at. If it's actually a good time to buy, letting me know where the market is in its current cycle. And it also projects five-year returns in this specific market or whatever market I want to search for based on the historic returns. So this isn't just a guess. These are projected returns based on real data and real historical returns. It then gives me a list of all the active property listings and investing metrics that I've been searching. So it gives me real listings within this market, it gives me the price, square foot, what the monthly cash flow would be, and the cash on cash ROI of these properties. These are real investor insights with real listing data and real actionable insights to be able to actually dominate the real estate market wherever you're at. You don't seem to realize what business you're in. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. So if all that doesn't blow you away, I honestly don't know what will. But if it did, stick with me as I walk through step by step on how I built this AI agent. You could easily build this AI agent into a real business, selling newsletters or selling data to real investors around the world. You could even recreate the 780,000 users website. Or you could even start a newsletter with all this amazing data. The opportunities are endless for someone who has the right data and is able to present that data correctly, especially in such a hot industry such as real estate. People are always looking for the best investments and they're always looking for the real actionable insights that this data actually provides. So hopping over to the entire workflow and what it looks like from the top down, I'm going to gloss over the entire workflow here but I'll also go step by step in each one of these workflows and show how I was able to extract the correct data and formulate that data into actionable and presentable data. So if you think you can build it from here, just pause it and look at this screenshot. But if you want the step by step, stay tuned as I go in depth on each one of these workflows and automations. So for the brains of this entire real estate agent, I'm running the trigger through a chat message, which you saw. But if you wanted this to run autonomously, you could totally make this schedule on trigger and pass through hard-coded market data if you had specific markets that you wanted to look for, such as Houston, two bed, two bath, a price range, multifamily, single family. The options are honestly endless with this workflow. You can go in so many different directions and capture so much valuable data. But for us, I'm going as a chat message just so I can search whatever I want, whenever I want. Getting into the brain, the AI agent that I've selected here is using ChatGPT as its backend. And if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to set that up, I'll link a video here. You will see I have a very detailed prompt in here going over what each tool is about, how they'll be structuring the data and returning the data, what kind of inputs it, it can expect. And I really use a lot of examples on how inputs and outputs will work. For example, cash flow, appreciation, flipping, rental income. I could go into the user input and say, I'm looking for cash flowing properties, or I'm looking for appreciation markets, or I'm looking to flip, or I'm looking for rental income. And it will tailor a lot of that to be able to answer that question. So this prompt really goes into every tool, how it's working, and what kind of examples it can expect to see either on the input side or the output side. And then it goes into how I want the response to be structured, saying I want two to three sentence, maybe four sentence, summary of market conditions. I want something clear and actionable that I can just look at as soon as it gives me an answer and make a decision within like the first five seconds. This is something that's really important because if you don't do this, it will give you a lot of data and it'll kind of just be jumbled together and you'll have to read the whole report for you to even get to this summary. So having a summary at the top where I can just quickly glance at and I can see, is this a market that I want to be involved in or not really is the entire point of this AI agent. I can totally make these reports on my own or go into the hours of detail into these markets. But the whole point of this AI agent is to remove that from your work schedule. Whether you're a 24 seven 
real estate investor or somebody who's passively investing in real estate, you don't have the time to be scrolling through endless listing sites or constantly crunching the numbers. You don't have the time and honestly, you don't need to. This AI agent will do it all for you. So then it will give the investment breakdown and market analysis, which you saw, and then it'll give all the actual properties that are listed within that certain criteria that are positive cash flowing ROI. It's not just giving any properties, it's only giving the best ones out of the entire bunch. And then some final rules, don't generate information outside of the tools, very important for hallucinations and giving me just random data that's not applicable for what I'm searching for. This entire AI prompt was made from an LLM. I gave it my entire workflow structure and how it was set up, what the tools were doing, how they were inputting and outputting data, and how the whole workflow was working and what the end goal of the workflow was. So something that I did with this workflow that I hadn't done in previous workflows, especially with AI agents, is I actually made it a complete outline of everything that I was doing and everything I was trying to accomplish. This was including what kind of models I was using, how the, how the AI agents were set up, what tools that the AI agent had, and then also a deeper dive into how all these tools were actually working and what nodes the workflows were using. And once I got into more complex nodes, such as the code nodes that you'll see later in the video, if you stick around, I gave an in-depth description on what the outputs of these code nodes were. And so doing this, I found I was a lot more organized and a lot more concise and matter of fact on how I was building this. But even without that, I input this straight into ChatGPT, Claude, DeepSeek, and had that structure the prompt for me. So I felt like my prompt was a whole lot more robust and covered a lot more examples, ended up working a whole lot better because I did this. Now, if you want this entire document, I have no problem sending it to you. Just let me know in the comments. Back to the brains of the operation. You can see that I have three tools here, the property search tool, the market trends tool, and the Zillow home value index tool. Jumping directly into the property search tool, if you watch any of my past videos, you'll think that this looks oddly familiar. And that is because it is. This entire backend is from a previous video that I'll link here. And this is what that automation looks like. It's a simple automation searching Zillow and getting the rental estimate and having a quick calculation to get cash on cash ROI and monthly cash flow in which that updates to a Google Sheets. There's some charting in there. Then it ultimately sends you a Gmail every morning at 9 a.m. saying these are your daily deals within your market. So if you're interested in that, check out that video. So getting into this workflow, the information extractor node, this is mainly just to structure the data that we're getting passed to it from our original chat node within our main AI agent and to structure that and give it actual variables to tie to. So you can see that I know the HTTP request in the upcoming nodes need specific variables to pass along to it into the query parameters. And I know that those are location, price, min, max, and how those are structured. And to be able to break those down, this information extractor really is amazing. I literally just put location, have a string, and then just type in here what the description of that variable that I want. So I'll just say this will be a city, address, neighborhood, or zip code. And on its own, it will go ahead and structure this data correctly. We don't have to do this. And it makes it a whole lot more robust on different chat inputs that you can have and it's still working correctly. One of the things that I did have problems with, I did have to put don't include dollar signs into these price min and price max ranges because I did notice that it was putting dollar signs in from the original prompt and that was passing on to the HTTP request and the HTTP requests were not liking it. So if you do it and follow me in this guide, you have don't include dollar signs. Other than these price mins max, I have bed, min, max, and that's really it. And I have a small prompt here, just you're an expert extraction algorithm. This kind of comes pre-made in here if you just click add this extra option or add a system prompt template. And I've only added, this is a property search and I will give specifics, need to S there, on properties to search, extract the valuable data. So from that extraction node, I will set these parameters and I have this here to hard code in some of these other parameters that I want just easy access to changing, something I can do on the fly or kind of set standards that I'm probably going to be keeping the same over time. Now, what you could do is you could add a more robust information extractor and put all these there. But for me, this is going to be pretty set in standard. Um, and if I wanted to change it, I could just change these Boolean values to true or false. So this is just the property type, single family, multifamily, condo. Oh, looks like I have this one in there twice. This will help our HTTP requests be filtered even more. And for this entire segment right here, I am just going to skip over it because I already covered it in the previous video that I linked. So if you really want to see what's in there, 
and how those are structured step by step. It'll be a way better experience if you go to that video and watch that. The investment calculator, I did change some things in here from that video. So if you're going to watch that video, just know that this investment calculator is a little bit different. And I'll go over it here. So one of the main things that I changed was how it was returning data. This is added here, listings. And that's because with the way the original data was being output, the AI agent wasn't able to go through the entire list of properties correctly. And it was only returning one. So just to combat that, I set it into a listings format and that alleviated all my problems. That's likely due to how this is split out here to be able to go through each property in the rent estimate here. So just going down the list of how this workflow executes, jumping over to the market trends tool and this automation. You'll notice that this automation and the home value index tool are basically the same in terms of how they're set up and how they work. And yes, I could have combined them and made it into one tool or one workflow, but I wanted them separate just due to the fact that if I wanted to query the results from only one of them, I didn't have both of them running and all of that data being passed through. And it just made it a little bit easier in my mind to simply go through this step by step. So you'll notice this is also very similar to how the property search workflow worked, but we just changed the URL and how we're making the market overview work. We edited fields just a little bit differently, which I honestly may take out. This is just due to I was having trouble with the code node properly getting the data that it needed. But I honestly think that I figured out what was wrong with my code node. I just wasn't pathing the variables correctly. And I think I'll be able to take this out, but for now I'm just gonna keep that in there. And then this market results tool is really cool. Like I said, it kind of took me a little bit to get this correct. This is one of the main tools that I think is really cool that will really change a lot of stuff for you. So you can see from the table of outputs, what all we're defining and computing from this list. So the return of this is not only limited by what you saw in the chat return, but yeah, the sales inventory, the median list price currently, how many new listings are on the market, the median sale price, just a ton of stuff. And all this is just so amazing that it can just be passed through automatically like this. And this is also where it's getting some of the negotiating power, the market timing, how prices are trending, what the inventory levels are looking like, if properties are sitting longer or shorter, if they're flying off the shelves, all the actionable insights that you need to actually understand what that market is looking like at that certain time based on historicals. So this is a lot of the investment insight that the in chat outputs is from this node right here. And if you want to see more of this code, just let me know. But this is pretty detailed code of different computations of trying to get all of those scales and all those outputs correct. So you'll see that it goes through a six month comparison, a year ago comparison, giving it a score, what the inventory looks like, and how all that works. So if you want this code, just let me know, I can send it to you. Or if you want this entire automation, pre-built for you. I can just send you this automation as well. And jumping over to the Zillow home value index tool, like I said, this is going to be pretty much a carbon copy of the market trends on how it's structured and how it's set up with the flow into the URL and into the code node. The only differences here are going to be the URL that you're using. There's going to be a different URL and different parameters that you're passing through. It's still just going to be searching based on neighborhood, city, or zip code, depending on what you input into the chat but the URL is gonna be different. The main difference is the code node here. So like I said, you'll see that there's no, no final set edit fields node here into the code node. And that's because what I was saying is I ended up figuring out why my code nodes were being a little funky on how this data was being outputted. It is outputted in a very deeply nested array. So you have to make sure that you are calling on these values correctly within that nested array. But into the nuts and bolts of this coding node, this is the output that it gives. Is it gives a market snapshot what the current home values are how homes have appreciated over the past over the past 8.3 years that's just because that's how much data we have when the peak value was and when the lowest value was and based off this market snapshot it gives two investment perspectives I honestly may take this one out it's kind of redundant but buying at the market low would have resulted in a 61.82 percent appreciation i guess that is could be a little bit more useful if it wasn't just a straight up appreciation curve as we've seen in most real estate markets, and it discounts a lot of the timing aspects of how real estate actually works. But nonetheless, the last one is just a market projection of appreciation. So it gives a home value projected in five years if the appreciation rates kind of stay the same within that market, which I think is valuable just to look at historicals and see kind of where the market is headed, where it could, where it could go. If you wanna see a more in-depth walkthrough of how I set up any of these workflows or how I'm structuring any of this data, 
via input or output, let me know in the comments. Also, if you want the code or if you just want the entire workflow sent to you, let me know in the comments, drop a comment or a like, and let me know and I can send it over to you. And please, if you enjoyed this at all or liked some of this real estate content that I'm doing, I will be making more videos going forward of this real estate agent. I think it'll be really cool to add comp values based on houses that we choose and getting a more granular look if certain deals are actually good deals or bad deals. Or if you have any other ideas for content, let me know. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.